ஆர் நோ ப்ராப்ளம் மீ ஹெட்ஸ் அப் all right greetings everyone welcome to that time of the day welcome to blue land india's uh, india's biggest um, student community with more than 80000 people across different platforms on top of that this is that time of the day where we come across people that we look up to insanely 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 great work in respective fields so today uh, this being a marketing week we have been covering across diverse portfolios but one thing which not a lot of people know about marketing is sports where the integration between marketing and sports uh, because we all think that uh, Uh, the level to which uh, ipl has just got into our blood as indians it's just involuntary but at the end of the day there's a ton of marketing that goes behind it so today we have rahul singh from world.io and this is what his description says building world's first cricket game fi okay cricket game fi uh, well his ex- his experience is extremely extremely deep ranging from things like um, here we go uh as a, as a as a senior software engineer to lead engineer in samsung to interning at aditya birla to working as a marketing manager in the in the space of sports for the walt disney company and then product manager at hotstar uh, which is now disney plus hotstar and later pro, uh, product manager and later co-founder of uh, bold.io uh, which is pretty ground breaking especially the product uh, bold is trying to build is super insane and uh, I, i must say rahul has previously worked as uh, worked in star sports that i mean the channel of course might be running behind you so well welcome rahul welcome to blue learn thank you chandan thank you for that uh, intro uh, very excited to talk to the community here uh, i think you guys done a, uh, have done a fantastic job of uh, bringing uh, you know 80000 plus uh, uh, people together and and creating a kind of a co learning space which uh, which is really um, you know uh, really exciting and and happy to be here so uh, chandan so i think yeah, you gave a little bit of uh, my intro uh, what i'll do is uh, i i'll i'll uh, take people through uh, my journey a little bit uh, and uh, talk about what all have been you know up to uh, so far and uh, and then we can we can start our uh, discussion so i um, i started off as an engineer um, so back in uh, 2003 to 7 i was in it madras uh, as a metallurgical engineer uh, if you believe and uh, i was not interested in metallurgy at all so uh, i i started doing coding uh, on the side and uh, i was super excited uh, you know always loved computers from my childhood uh, so i started coding and i uh, i went out of college uh, and joined a startup uh, there uh, it was around 2007 8 when recession hit and uh, you know the all the funding and everything stopped the startup had to shut down and that was my first experience with the uh, kind of startup failure uh then uh, because of the downturn i i did a couple of jobs uh, here and there one of them being samsung like you mentioned and there i was working on uh, android applications uh I built uh, a few of them for you know various uh, devices and uh, i was uh, i was there for about two and a half years uh, when i decided that you know what uh, i have uh, learned enough of coding uh, and uh, reached to a level where you know i have to decide whether i want to become a, you know go deep into tech or uh, i want to go uh, into uh, the business side and uh, that's that was the decision where, uh, where I, i i thought that you know uh, business side is more exciting for me so uh, i did an mba uh, from am lucknow Uh, and and while i was in campus in am lucknow uh, star sports was one of the uh, one of the companies uh, that that came for uh, uh, yeah so uh, they they came for a campus placement 
And I thought, you know, Star Sports, uh, never heard of uh, them recruiting from uh, top B schools. Uh, so I, I kind of inquired and they were looking for sports marketing and that was kind of the first time they had uh, come to the campus of any any top B school, right? So I uh, was instantly excited. I, I've been a sports person uh, from, from childhood. Uh, I, I represented state and 19 and I was uh, I was an avid cricketer since since I was like four or five years old. So uh, so sports and uh, because I wanted to do marketing, this was like the dream combination, right? So I decided that then and there that this is the company I want to work with, right? Uh, luckily, I, I got placed there, uh, worked there for about uh, five five and a half six years, including uh, stint at Hotstar. But uh, majority of my work was with uh, Star Sports. And uh, there I was uh, lucky enough to uh, to enter at the time when uh, Pro Kabaddi League was kind of just getting formulated and uh, getting, uh, you know, uh, uh, strateg uh, strategized about how to build it, how to build the brand. Uh, and I, I jumped straight away into it, right? Uh, uh, I was part of the core marketing team there. And uh, there uh, we started from scratch building the brand that is pro Kavaddi that you see today. But back then it was, uh, there were a lot of challenges, of course, uh, shall we say. Uh, we, we can come to that later, but uh, uh, work there. Uh, then uh, after about three and a half years, uh, there's a hot star, uh, which was an internal uh, team, which was, you know, growing uh, insanely. And uh, that was a tech, a tech experience that I always wanted on my CV. So I took an internal uh, change uh, worked as a product manager in Star uh, Hotstar, but it was again in the sports side. Uh, then, uh, then again the startup bug kind of bit. Not enough of this. Uh, let's let's start up. So that's where Bold.io happened last year, right? So that's been my journey. Uh, not so short uh, journey, and uh, very happy to deep deep dive into the sports marketing bit of it, the sports experience. And take any questions uh, that that people might have right now. Uh, Rahul, do you want to do it right now, or you want to do it at the end? Uh, let's do it at the end. Uh, let's follow your structure, whatever you have. Definitely, definitely, uh, guys. If you have any questions, you can feel free to put it on the no mic section, and yeah, you will definitely get a chance to speak. Uh, you can raise your hand, but yeah, at the end of the session. Right. Um, so, so sports marketing, right? Um, all of us, this, since this is the marketing week uh, with Bold IO, I'm sure you would have uh, already gotten a preview about marketing as such uh, but just just quickly uh, if i if i have to summarize marketing it is uh, it is basically uh, you have a product uh, you want people to be aware of the product you want people to sample the product and you want people to buy the product right uh, and use the product and 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 say good things about the product and and perhaps reuse the product so so all of that, the entire process of taking the product to the consumer, uh, to the end consumer, and and then managing the entire life cycle. I, I, I think that that's what marketing is in a nutshell, and it involves your uh, the communication part, the 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 target group part, um, the understanding who your target audience is, uh, then and shaping the communication so that they understand and. Also, of course, not uh, discounting the channels on which uh, these these people are right. So, uh, so these are the these are the main things, right? I mean, uh, not getting into too much detail there, but uh, there is a very salient difference when it comes to sports marketing, right? Uh, there are there are a couple of differences. One is that. Sports is a live event, right? So for uh, any product that uh, in traditional marketing, if you're trying to market, what happens is 
that that product is there with you you understand uh, its properties it is something that you can probably change as well uh, and uh, suit to your audience's needs take feedback from audience and uh, kind of tailor your product in such a way that it it kind of resonates with your audience when it comes to sports sports being a live event you have no control once the floodlights are on and and the game starts right uh, you can do everything before and after but of course you have no control on how the thing i mean you can have a brilliant campaign about a game a uh, 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 let's say a ipl final and that turns out to be a dead rubber or worse it turns out to be uh, you know washed out because of rain or or any of those circumstances and those are beyond your control so as a marketer uh, so one one is you have to be cognizant of that second thing is the target group right the target group is uh, is the fans and fans are super passionate these guys are essentially uh, you know they attach their persona or their personality along with the sports brand right so if you're following indian team uh, you have very very strong emotional attachment if you follow a football club uh, you have a very strong attachment to the club to the players right and that kind of attachment is not seen in in your traditional uh, marketing side so uh i mean apart from probably apple fans uh, which i never understood uh, why there was so much passion but um, but apart from that in no product uh, can elicit that kind of emotional response as sports can right so marketing to these passionate people who who are who are very vocal as well is going to be tricky right you have to be cognizant of that so these are a couple of differences that are dif- uh, that that kind of differentiate a traditional marketing from sports marketing and uh, what i'll do is uh, chandan if you have uh, anything on the agenda or or should i have uh, go ahead with uh, talking about my experience with the uh, sports sports uh, i think we can do that but yeah. one of my questions i mean that i personally had is something like uh, Like how do you yeah. ensure that it becomes a home name? Because uh, as you mentioned, like you work for uh, the Kabaddi League, the Kabaddi League, uh, yeah. which back back in two thousand fourteen is when you started working for Star, right? I believe fifteen, fifteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen. Yes. Yeah. So, but uh, I mean, the amount of, uh, the amount level to which like everybody known happened somewhere at the like uh, mid two thousand eighteen nineteen, right? Yes. because that's yeah. when we started to see a huge traction and the and a lot yes. of roi in the space so like what really keeps you driving for two years straight to build something that without any roi yeah yeah uh, in fact even in 2018 i think uh, we could measure roi in terms of uh, number of eyeballs uh, that watch the game so the reach and uh, and the time spent watching but uh, in terms of uh, financial roi there was none because we uh, we spent a lot of uh, money and and, uh, and the revenue was not uh, that great right so so uh, it, it's 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 a it's a matter of uh, first of all believing in uh, in the sport so one of the things that uh, we uh, understood from uh the the strategy that star sports was following at that point of time was that you know we want to make india a multi sport nation right uh before to 2014 uh unfortunately uh we were a single sport nation right we only follow cricket uh we followed badminton if uh, let's say uh, once in four years uh, when uh, when someone like uh, uh uh pv sindhu is playing in the olympics or something so that is one of uh but apart from that we we don't follow any sport apart from cricket right so this was this was a massive challenge so how do we uh convert the single a uh, single sport country into a multiple sport country right that was one and second thing is the biggest challenge with kabaddi was that beyond their childhood and beyond their 
uh, you know, playing, playing in dirt, playing in mud. Uh, no one kind of had any uh, idea that that kabaddi can take such an avatar, which which uh, kind of showed on TV, right? True, true, true. Totally, I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. Right. So there was a lot of nostalgic value. Uh, people had seen or had played kabaddi in their childhood, but apart from that, no one could visualize that you know kabaddi can be presented in that that kind of avatar. So, so. Uh, to, to kind of do a 360 uh, or 180 degree transformation of the brand image of the sport was another huge challenge for us. And I think these are the, these are the challenges that drove us to, uh, to kind of make Kabaddi what it became in, in uh, three, four years time from, from its, uh, its beginning. Got it, got it, got it. So, uh, I mean, Back then, there was, there was not really a lot of SEO that has also been done. Uh, the only way of penetrating is by that uh, CRT TV and most probably the beginning of LCD and LEDs. So, I mean, yes. what really triggered people to get into the sport in a time where there is not a lot of digital presence that has been there? I mean, I agree that it is there, but not so much compared yeah. to as of today. That's true, that's true. Uh, and... That's where I think the strength of your traditional media comes in. Uh, because uh, at that point, we have, uh, Star is very strong in, in television media, right? Uh, we leverage that to the full extent. Uh, we had massive reach when it comes to, uh, you know, Star, the channels like Star Plus and uh, Star Gold, the movie channels and others, right? So, uh, when we wanted to market or reach uh, to the audience that we believe were the were the right audience for us, uh, we 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 had this uh, hypothesis, and of course we did a lot of market testing as well. Uh, we thought that this game will have a massive adoption in the tier two, tier three towns, right? That's where uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, you know nostalgic factor. There's a lot of uh, understanding of the game. Uh, so, so that was the belief and, uh, star sports, uh, sorry, uh, not star sports, but star India as such, uh, with all its channels, uh, Hindi channels and movie channels and all those had massive reach in those, uh, in those geographies. So we made maximum use of that and we created very, very, um, clear communication or clear value proposition for the audience. Uh, the value prop was very simple that this is a game uh, which is attached to your, uh, you know, motherland. This is uh, this is a game which uh, you have played in your childhood. And uh, and this is a very fast, strong, uh, unlike cricket, which was like a, even a starters format is three hour game. This was like only 40 minutes. So quick snackable content very fast, very strong and a lot of action. So that was our, that was our pitch and it really worked right uh, with the audience. And that's the reason we saw massive, massive numbers uh, of audience. Uh, okay. Rahul, a little out of the topic, but uh, yep. I, I mean, since you worked in Disney plus Hotstar, uh, so what do you, what do you think about uh, the right scene where there, I mean, uh, right now there are like a lot of players in the space of OTT uh, and Netflix is dying. But do you think this is the end of Netflix or is like Netflix seriously declining or is there a way out? Um, so, yeah, I, th that's a loaded question. So uh, I think that Netflix suffers from a couple of problems. Um, and these are very basic to the uh, com company itself, right? Uh, the way it is built. First of all, I think that uh, first of all, they didn't understand uh, the uh, the Indian audience. Uh, the kind of content that that they created was very uh, very niche and very South Bombay, South Delhi kind of uh, content, right? Uh, if you if you compare that with the the likes of Mirzapur and 
and other super uh, you know rooted uh, in indian uh, indianness and 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 a mass appeal kind of content that is something that they could not uh, do uh, even even sacred games which is pretty big uh, for netflix uh, it still had type of content that appeals the the kind of you know bombay delhi audience more than your uh, you know uh, deep up hinterland or or orissa kind of audience right so so that was one content strategy i think that that, that was one a, a second thing was obviously the high uh, cost uh, because everyone else is in the range of like 100 200 uh, per month uh, i think highest is about 200 to 300 per month kind of range for others and netflix was starting with 500 and and going to 800 and stuff so uh, so that was that was second uh, big mistake uh, and uh, they've also been uh, recently because of the bad news of you know their share dropping 70% that was partly due to the you know global recession and that's kind of happening right now uh, uh, that was another reason why they came into the lim- limelight because you know their uh, share uh, price fell 70% uh while everyone everyone else uh, was going down uh, they went down much farther so so that was again uh, another negative i don't think uh, they are uh, they are in the death spiral right now uh, uh, they need to really rethink the content strategy across uh, if if they want to sustain in india they want uh, they definitely need to do uh, need to think about pricing strategy and uh, and globally they also need to kind of solve some of the some of those issues that they are uh, ailing them right you know like password sharing and stuff like that so yeah those are the some of the factors which i think uh, are a problem sure 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 got it rahul i think we can continue with uh, the career aspect that you're talking about yes. right 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 so um so like i said uh, when you are thinking about career in sports marketing or when you are thinking about sports marketing uh, when i uh, when i started uh, thinking about marketing for kabaddi uh, or ipl for that matter uh, so those those two points which i mentioned earlier i i, I would really like uh, repeat it because those, those are very important uh, one is of course you are dealing with very passionate fans uh so the kind of communication that you are uh, coming out with has to be spot on and has to have that kind of empathy that uh that sports fans love otherwise they are going to shout from the rooftops and and really make uh, life difficult and we face th- those conditions as well uh second thing is uh, uh second thing is that this is a live event right so you can't control the product itself uh what you can do is uh, you know build a lot of uh you know noise around the sport so you know the way you package it the way you uh, show it on tv uh, the analysis all of those things that's under your control but the sport itself is not under your control so thinking about sports marketing as a career uh, i think this is this is suited for anyone who's uh, who's very passionate about sports for the first uh, first of all uh, because you know you you have to have that deep insight about you know being a sports fan uh, what does it feel to be a sports fan and and uh, so understanding of the sport is very very important uh, and not just understanding but passion for sport is very important right uh, second thing is uh, what you need to consider is uh, there are lots of different types of uh, roles that you can do now that we have uh social media as well uh, we have digital marketing uh the the connection between uh, the brand and the fans has become direct right so what you uh, what you could not do earlier and uh, chandan talked about uh, the times it to 2014 15 uh, when there was social media of course uh, facebook and uh, google were there uh, but it was not uh as as big as it, it is right now right so so the communication and everything the interactions were not that great so it was mostly one way communication uh but right now uh we have very passionate communities we have 
uh, we have the social media where you know people do express their opinions so it has become more of a two way communication and and uh, you have to really leverage that when you are a sports marketer uh, you know, the the advent of communities i think this is a very uh, interesting kind of development because now the communities have taken the forefront uh, thanks to web3 and there is a there is a huge overlap i think between uh, between web3 and sports uh, because you know sports is also a community led uh, marketing and uh, web3 is also community led marketing so um, there's there's a lot to be learned from each other right so i think there's that this is a very interesting development uh, we can we can uh, we can look at uh, different types of uh, sports road that will be there so of course you know, if you see the sports ecosystem you have the broadcaster who i worked for uh, star sports and then you have sony uh, uh who was there i i don't think anybody else is. i mean even these guys uh, google and amazon are rumored to be uh, trying to bid for ipl uh, so so these these players are also ott players are also kind of coming into the sports domain so you have these broadcasters uh, who are uh, who are your primary kind of uh, employers for sports marketers then you have uh, sports clubs like uh, the football uh, of course ifl clubs ipl clubs ptl clubs so you have the marketing team there yeah there what you need to do is basically promote the club um, you know, uh, create create the club fan communities, interact with the fan communities, and uh, brand build your brand. And uh, third uh, part in in sports marketing or third career opportunity in sports marketing is uh, is with the with the brands uh, like of Nike or Adidas or Puma, who are very heavily uh, who use sports very heavily to market themselves, right? So, uh, so those those are again some of the options uh, for a career uh, when it comes to sports marketing. Nowadays, a lot of analytics is also being done around sports. So, those are also if if you are a very analytically driven person, then uh, you can think about uh, you know uh, creating your niche or creating your career in that in that space as well, right? Then you have, uh, last but not least, a lot of these content creators, either either influencers on social media or uh, podcasters. All of these are very viable career options these days for sports. Sure, 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 definitely. Uh, Rahul, I mean, one thing which like really got me hooked is the line when you mentioned uh, the Goliaths are getting into the sports marketing in India, especially when you mentioned uh, the companies. Uh, I mean. Amazon is trying to bid for IPL, but yeah, uh, th there's a huge association, especially back in 2019, like when they started promoting in India, and then uh, during 20s is especially when uh, they all they already did uh, football live uh, exclusives on pre uh, Prime at a point, but I don't really see that happening again. Uh, so, do you really think people of this country uh, would? be great to pay thousand bucks a year to watch cricket that is extremely exclusive I mean, because right now games mm -hmm. have all sports have always been seen as a very diversified um, thing for people to approach but now yeah. uh, everything is just getting onto the lines of premium yes. I mean, you must be aware about how cnn tried to make a social media uh, i mean an ott platform by itself and almost uh, burnt three trillion, uh, sorry, three billion dollars, and completely yes. uh, bankrupt. Got bankrupt. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, uh, very good question. Uh, I think to answer the first question, uh, people are already watching uh, IPL on Hotstar, right? And uh, IPL is is kind of behind the paywall, uh, so you will you will see uh, you know a lot of people because because IPL is a huge property. I mean people uh, just subscribe for those two months when IPL is on, and and then leave subscription. So you're talking about you know spending five six hundred bucks 
uh, for for watching IPL, which which people are you know going to do very easily. Of course, um, a large majority of the audience are still on TV, uh, which of course is dominated by Star Sports. Uh, not sure if uh, they are going to retain the rights, or or will it be Sony or anyone else? But uh, but hardly like um, whoever is is watching on Hotstar. Uh, you see the crazy numbers like you know two crore people, uh, two and a half crore people watching uh, live matches, which are like uh, IPL finals and and important matches. Those guys are paid audiences and those guys are going to uh, watch and and that number is massive when it comes to uh, the likes of Amazon Prime and and Netflix even right uh, so even Facebook tried to uh, get the rights the last time uh, so um, so these these this could be a, a huge opportunity for these uh, these OTT players to make real inroads see like earlier, I said Netflix has a real content problem in India, and if they get IPL, imagine the number of people that will subscribe to Netflix. Uh, that will definitely go up, right? So, uh, so that would be the strategy, and that is the strategy that these OTT players are trying to do. Second thing that you mentioned was um, um, I, I forgot the second question. <laughs> it was about CNN. Uh, they CNN. Yeah, yeah. So CNN. Um, I mean, what went wrong there? I think they, uh, I haven't studied that to be honest. And um, I, I read one article where they said that they hadn't done their homework when it comes to you know content and whether people will subscribe. Uh, CNN's uh, CNN subscription price was very high. CNN Plus it was, I think. And uh, people were already subscribed to the likes of Netflix and uh, Hulu and. Uh, and Disney Plus Hotstar, uh, sorry, not Hotstar, Disney Plus in the US. So, um, so adding another subscription for CNN that uh, no one kind of, uh, no one kind of took it off, and uh, and they burned a lot of money in marketing trying to get. So, I think the number was ten is to one, right? Uh, marketing cost versus the lifetime value, or or maybe I I might be wrong in that, but but they, it was massive, right? So. Um, so yeah, that was that was again lack of uh, insight probably or or something, but yeah, pretty, pretty interesting. I mean, we should see how things are going because three I mean three billion dollars is not an easy thing for a company to put in and then completely take it down, saying that it's not working, so let's just stop. So yeah. Uh, I mean, today, I'm um, almost like a week ago. I, I, I was watching something. I, I was watching news on these lines, and I was like, it, it was so funny. I, I, not really funny, but, but so fascinating actually. So, yeah. Uh, Rahul, shall we go for questions now? Absolutely, absolutely. Happy to. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand or put it in the chat box, and we can go ahead with the questions. Uh, Ritik, I've given you uh, the rights. You can come on. Um, hi, Chandra. Hi, Rahul, sir. Can you hear me? Hi, Ritik. Yes, we are you. Yeah. Uh, I'm amazed by seeing your website, uh, first of all, and uh, the way it is, the user experience is great. So, like, uh, uh, I want... Which website? Sorry. Uh, what? Which website did you say? Sorry, I, I missed that. Uh, your website, Boiled... Okay, okay, bold. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> means it's a creative uh, build. Means it's very interesting and uh, user friendly. So, like uh, uh, you are into marketing, I am also want to go into business type of stuff. And I want to know, like you are doing in the cryptocurrency and all of uh, that NFTs. So, uh, how you are working on that? Means you are creating that uh, sort of uh, uh, animation. Uh, so what is the use of that? I want to know. Uh, one sec, one sec, one sec. Uh, Rahul, is it just me or uh, is Ritik's voice muffled? Uh, yeah, there's, there's, a... there's, there's some disturbance. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Ritik, Ritik, can you just... I think, uh, I, think I got the back? question. Uh, oh, cool, cool, it's cool. about yeah. bold.io and 
what we are doing with the NFTs? Is that the question? Yeah, what is the business model? Means, uh, what is your vision with that? Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Very quickly, uh, since this is uh, not the topic, but uh, very quickly, I tell you, uh, Bold.io is basically a NFT card game, uh, where uh, if you go to the website, you see the NFTs. Uh, those are digital assets that you can uh, take to a uh, to what is called an arena, uh, which we are building. And inside the arena, there are multiple games that you can play using those NFTs. And uh, you know, the if you win those games, you can get cryptocurrency, right? Uh, as your rewards. And those cryptos that you can, uh, you know, either sell on uh, crypt exchanges or pull it out in your uh, own wallet, crypto wallet, and keep it for uh, for uh, appreciation. Uh, so those are that. That's the business model in a nutshell. Okay, great. Actually, I'm right now like uh, I'm re reading about uh, this uh, uh, color psychology in branding. So uh, there is a lot of stuff to study and read. Like uh, uh, it's like an ocean. So do you find it overwhelming? Like marketing is overwhelming for you. Like how you manage it? Like when you starting your career in this field or uh, developing your skill set, how you focus? Like uh, yeah. I want to go in. For study this, then this, then this. Got it, got it. Good question. That's a very good question. So, like you said, marketing is definitely an ocean. Uh, and uh, marketing, if you uh, if you dive into marketing, there are about you know thirty to forty different specific specializations that you can do, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So. Uh, the way to do it is, uh, and I will take my example. Uh, that's what I have. Uh, so when I entered uh, uh, the marketing field, I had just studied marketing uh, at college, and you know how people study uh, in college, right? So I had no, uh, not not a lot of idea. Uh, but then uh, you get into the various aspects of marketing, right? Without having the knowledge, I mean, it's it's pretty intuitive, right? If you understand things from a first principle perspective. What is marketing? Marketing is just taking your product and uh, you know telling the other person how good your product is and they should try it, right? So uh, now there are various aspects involved in that. First is of course understanding your own product. Second thing is uh, understanding the audience that you have built that product for. Then uh, how are you going to reach that audience? How are you going to communicate with that audience? So the channel. And then what are you going to say to that audience, right? So how are you going to excite them? I mean, you can't just say, you know, this is, you know, if, stop, if Steve Jobs had come to you and said, uh, Rithik, this is, a, this is a phone and, uh, you know, you can talk with it. Why don't you go ahead and use it? Of course, you're not going to be too excited. I mean, maybe you would, uh, but let's say you didn't know Steve Jobs back then. And you would say, yeah, what, what are you talking about, right? So. Uh, so, so the way you communicate is also very important. So I've already listed down like four or five things and you can go deeper into that again. Right? So, uh, so in, in terms of channels, you have the traditional channels and, uh, and, uh, and the current, uh, digital channels or with modern channels, traditional channels where you have, uh, TV, radio, uh, newspaper, uh, wherever your audience are. Right? Uh, so if it's older audience, you are targeting, then. You go with these uh, different channels. If it's a male audience that you're targeting, then you go for sports channels and you go for uh, news channels. If it's the female audience you're targeting, then you go for uh, for other channels. Then you have the digital. If you're targeting youth, young people like yourself, then we we go into a social media, we go into Discord, we go into other other kind of things, right? So channel is one thing. Then uh, third thing is communication. Communication is basically the creative part of it, right? What are you going to say? Uh, how are you going to say it? So whether it's a video format or audio format, uh, in in video format again, uh, either it is animation or real, uh, you know, celebrity or whatever you're going to use, right? So those are the, that's that becomes the communication part. So you can specialize in any of these depending on your interest. So if you are very analytically inclined. Then you can you can get into a market research where there is a lot of data. You crunch a lot of data and understand the market. If you are creatively inclined, 
then uh, you you can go into communication which is about you know creating the videos creating uh, podcasts creating animations writing blogs and stuff like that so creating content right if you are uh, maybe a, a person who who can manage things then you go into the media planning where you can you say that you know i am going to put this much uh, uh, budget into tv i am going to put this much but budget into digital and all those things right so so those are various aspects and then you can go deeper and deeper and deeper into those things as well so even within digital you have social media you have performance marketing you have content marketing you have you know x y z and these things keep coming up and coming up you have to uh, you have to also constantly update yourself right so the way you do it is first understand yourself what is your inclination what do you want to do and then pick that specific area in marketing and go deep into that so that that would be my kind of suggestion to anyone who wants to get into uh, marketing great great sir means it's uh, open a lot of uh, um, like uh, 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 mujhe bahut kuch pata chala aur i really passionate about marketing and creative stuff means if i want like uh, how to build brand and like so i'm inclined toward that so thank you sir for yeah uh, brand mein brand mein creative ka kaafi kaam hota hai to agar creative mein hai to go into creative uh, seekho video kaise banate hain seekho communication kaise banate hain communications mein jao go deep okay. into that सो बिजनेस करना सही रहेगा मतलब साथ साथ बिकॉज आई एम राइट नाउ ट्वेंटी वन आई एम थिंकिंग कि आई वॉन्ट टू गो टू बिजनेस तो मार्केटिंग पे पहले जॉब हो जाए आई विल स्टार्ट माई स्टफ लाइक व्हाट्स एवर लाइक छोटा बिजनेस बड़ा बिजनेस और स्टार्ट बाई डूइंग दैट लर्न अलॉन्ग विद दैट यार ऋतिक आई थिंक दैट्स अ वेरी ब्रॉड क्वेश्चन ठीक है तो उसके लिए तुम्हारी करंट सिचुएशन समझ में आनी चाहिए मुझे uh, अभी मतलब व्हाट व्हाट इज योर कॉन्टेक्स्ट उसके बिना कुछ ऐसा एडवाइस देना ठीक नहीं रहेगा तो वी कैन कनेक्ट सेपरेटली है ना एंड एंड आई आई कैन टॉक टू यू अबाउट इट इन डिटेल सो फर्स्ट आई विल हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड यू हु यू आर हु उसको क्या मतलब उसके कॉन्टेक्स क्या है फैमिली क्या है लाइफ uh, स्टेज क्या है राइट और उसके बाद फिर मैं कुछ बता पाऊंगा ओके सर आई जस्ट लाइक सेंड यू रिक्वेस्ट ऑन लिंक्ड इन आई थिंक दैट्स द बेस्ट पॉसिबल वे टू कनेक्ट विद यू या 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 थैंक यू सर रियली इनसाइटफुल सेशन एंड हैव अ ग्रेट कन्वर्सेशन सर थैंक यू सर ऑल राइट सो लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट पर्सन Uh, is there so i have sent you the accept button and you can press on that okay uh saksham i have sent you as well so all you need to do is just press that accept button and yes you are on stage hi saksham hey hi chandan hi rahul hi saksham yeah so my question was that like when pro kabaddi was launched i think recently like like during that time period another league which was in football isl indian super league that was also launched but that like failed i don't remember like more seasons of it after after on so how is that there like what led to that failure and what led to the success of pro kabaddi because these were like new true introductions to making like india that you said like a multi sports country right right so um good question again and uh... Uh, ISL is not dead. Uh, it's still happening. Uh, you probably uh, not you're not getting that uh, communication now. Uh, and you're right. I mean, in terms of in relative terms, I would say that Pro Kabaddi uh, was a success compared to ISL. Um, and there are various aspects to it. I I will just go into the most uh, important ones. पहली बात तो यार problem with football is that uh, there are there are two types of football fans in india right uh, one is who only watch european football uh, they follow la liga they follow premier league uh, they watch the world cup and they are used to 
that kind of intensity and you know great play and the superstars like ronaldo and messi and even hazard and stuff like that right now uh, indian football by contrast uh, is it, it, the quality is not to that level right so mm-hmm. uh, those guys who watch english football do not watch uh, indian football correct so there is always a comparison Yes, those fans, yes. fans will uh, they normally don't like i mean there are few i know that uh, who do but the overlap is less now the second type of uh, football fans in india are the passionate uh, club fans uh, like mohan bagan fans like east bengal fans like churchill brother fans and uh, and there are a few you know of these so uh, there used to be i league earlier and uh, these are like 100 year old clubs very passionate fan base and these are again in pockets in india so there is a west bengal pocket uh, which follows his, uh, its football very passionately in kerala the uh, football is followed very passionately in goa it's followed in northeast right but apart from the, these pockets uh, you don't have much of a following for indian football uh, in fact for that matter Uh, there is no following for football apart from these pockets and apart from the uh, delhi bombay crowd who who kind of youngsters who follow ipl uh, sorry epl uh, premier league and la liga so so the base itself was low and because of the comparison factor uh, uh, the the young younger audience didn't like the indian football and isl itself did not have a uh, a uh, following because the traditional football followers followed their own football uh, uh, clubs like mohan bagan which was not in isl like east bengal which is not in isl right so us karan se isl ko bahut zyada wo mil nahi paya matlab ek ek base nahi mil paya kisi bhi audience ka uh, even so i mean uh, in terms of if you see in terms of tv viewership uh, isl was the fifth biggest in the world right uh in terms of tv viewership uh but i mean because india is so big i i guess uh, india always has to kind of rank in those terms uh when it comes to kabaddi kabaddi did not have any such hangover right kabaddi was uh, there was no like already uh, a league which was being followed or clubs which were being followed it was a completely novel experience a new experience for everyone everyone saw kabaddi on tv and they were just amazed that what is this thing i have never seen such a thing in my life right i have never seen kabaddi in this avatar on mat under flood lights in a very beautiful stadium and you know with crowd and everything so that was kind of the factor that uh, attracted people towards it and that was the reason for its early success are you saying something saksham but see am i audible yeah chandan you are oh okay 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 uh okay uh, rahul so i think we can end if there are any questions right now so audience if you have any questions you can raise your hand i will bring you onto the stage uh okay rahul so before we end would you want to say something uh i i would uh... this want to say that uh, it was great interacting with you i think there were some very good questions uh, and loved sharing my experience uh, currently building bold.io which is also into sports and uh, and and you know i would urge people to just check it out join our community and uh, and see uh, for themselves what we are building and and you know uh, super excited to be building that so if anyone is interested in in working for uh, with us in any capacity um if you are like truly passionate about sports or truly passionate about gaming uh or marketing i mean uh, we can we can definitely have a discussion so so yeah i'll end with that uh, super in, uh, excited uh, to have uh, talk to you guys and hope for more such sessions Thank you so much, Rahul. And uh, it's been a pleasure hosting you. On top of that, I 
learned a lot. Uh, I mean, a ton of questions that I've been having are all clear. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. So audience, that is the session and conversation with Rahul.